Madam Minister, Mr. State Secretary, Madam Santos Paes, distinguished parliamentarians, distinguished representatives of the government, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. We are all gathered in Ankara at this conference to assess Europe's progress in the follow-up to the recommendations contained in the UN study on violence against children, to give visibility to sample practices, to assess needs, and to identify a number of concrete steps that could be taken by the Council of Europe in the years to come. Let me greet you on behalf of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, which is where I represent my country, Croatia. The Committee of Ministers attaches great importance to the children's rights agenda, and I'm speaking to you today in my role as the thematic coordinator for children. This conference brings together representatives from governments, the judiciary, NGOs, and international organizations, as well as parliamentarians, ombudspersons, researchers, journalists, and professionals working with children. The involvement and active support of all these actors are essential for the prevention and effective eradication of violence against children, and I wish to thank you all for joining us here. Ladies and gentlemen, all children in Europe have the right to be protected from all forms of violence. All countries in Europe have ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child and therefore have the legal obligation to guarantee their, these rights. Routine exposure to physical, sexual and psychological violence continues, however, to be a reality for many of Europe's 150 million children. Violence overtakes them in homes and in schools, in care and the justice systems, in the cyberspace, in places of work and in communities. The process that led to the publication of Pilo Pinheiro's World Report on Violence Against Children and to the presentation of its findings and recommendations to the UN General Assembly in 2006 gave an unprecedented visibility to the phenomenon of violence. It also generated a tremendous momentum for the combat towards its elimination. Since 2006, the recommendations contained in Professor Pinheiro's studies have guided the Council of Europe efforts to effectively address the phenomenon of violence against children in all its complexity and in a sustainable way. Convinced of the need of coordinating our efforts with those of the rest of the international community, the Committee of Ministers decided that the Council of Europe should become the regional forum in Europe for the follow-up to the UN study. To do so, we have established an excellent cooperation with the United Nations Special Representative of the Secretary-General on Violence Against Children, Mrs. Marta santos Paes whom I wish to welcome here most warmly. Mrs. Santos Paes will certainly inform us about the results of her recent Global Progress Report. I hope we shall hear that important progress has been achieved in all regions of the world, and I look forward to discovering her vision of the next steps. Tackling all forms of violence against children, ladies and gentlemen, has been at the core of the Council of Europe's program Building a Europe for and with Children since its inception in 2006. Not surprisingly, eliminating all forms of violence is the first of the four strategic objectives of the Council of Europe's strategy on the rights of the child, 2012-2015. The three other strategic objectives also constitute a follow-up to the UN study recommendations. They are promoting child-friendly services and systems, guaranteeing the rights of children in vulnerable situations, promoting child participation. Within this framework, the Council of Europe approach to eliminate violence against children is twofold. On the one hand, we want to create the conditions to eliminate all existing and emerging forms of violence through 
the adoption of national strategies. On the other hand, we have designed tools to address some very widespread forms of violence like corporal punishment, sexual violence and domestic violence. We strongly believe that the only way of securing the sustainable, efficient and right-centered childhood policy is through the adoption of strong national integrated strategies likely to survive and respond to any social, economic and political challenge. This was indeed the first of the 12 recommendations contained in the UN study, a recommendation which focused on the need to strengthen national and local commitment to action. To support governments in this process, the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe adopted in 2009 a set of guidelines on integrated national strategies for the protection of children from violence. I am pleased to report that these guidelines are helping our member states to make the progress needed in this field. I am also glad that many of you who have joined us here today come from countries which have actually committed themselves to building strong national strategies and action plans for the protection of children against all forms of violence. I am very much looking forward to Dr. Ruth Farooja's presentation, who will tell us more how we are progressing in Europe and where we still have work to do. Some forms of violence call for specific measures. At the Council of Europe, we have decided to start by addressing two of the most widespread forms of violence, corporal punishment and sexual violence. In order to eliminate the violent discipline of children, the Council of Europe launched in 2008 its campaign Raise Your Hand Against Smacking, smacking with the aims of achieving full prohibition of corporal punishment everywhere in our member states and of promoting positive parenting policies. Corporal punishment is not only a violation of children's rights to respect for physical integrity, and human dignity. It also teaches children that violence is an unacceptable and inappropriate strategy for resolving conflict or getting people to do what they want. Moreover, all available research shows that in the long term, corporal punishment is absolutely ineffective as a means of discipline and that there are efficient and respectful ways of edu educating children. Last but not least, it is important to note that legal and social tolerance for violence seriously undermines any efforts we may undertake to protect children's rights and to secure their well-being. It is an element of distortion that has no place in our vision for a child-friendly Europe. 33 countries in the world have fully prohibited all corporal punishment of children in law including 23 Council of Europe member states. We are on the right track, but we must not stop until we have a universal ban on corporal punishment. Another topic that we have decided to address is sexual violence against children. Scientific research suggests that around 20% of children in Europe might be victims of some form of the many forms of sexual violence. It is estimated that in 70 to 85 percent of cases, the offender is somebody the child knows, trusts, or even loves. The entry into force in 2010 of the Council of Europe Convention on the Protection of Children Against Sexual Exploitation and Sexual Abuse, so-called the Lanzarote Convention, represented a significant advance in preventing sexual violence, protecting children and combating impunity. The Lanzarote Convention is the first international instrument to treat sexual abuse of children as a crime, irrespective of where or by whom it is committed, at home, in a child care institution, through organized crime networks or in the internet. To date, this treaty has been ratified by 23 countries in Europe. The Lanzarote family is growing very rapidly. To support this process, the Council of Europe launched in 2010 its one in five campaign 
to stop sexual violence against children. This campaign has been designed to promote the Lanzarote Convention, to raise awareness of the extent of sexual violence, and to provide people with the tools they need to protect children and to prevent and report sexual violence. The campaign is allowing us to fill important gaps in terms of prevention. For instance, in view of the difficulties that many countries have in addressing the issue of sexual abuse, within the child circle of trust. The Council of Europe has developed awareness raising and information material around the character called Kiko, designed to help parents discuss this sensitive issue with their young children. The material has also proved to be extremely useful in other contexts. It is, for instance, used in many countries by health professionals, teachers, or social workers. Currently, we have around 20 countries campaigning with us. I am very pleased to see that we have the International Children's Center from Turkey with us today, with whom we have an excellent cooperation, and who is about to become our national one in five campaign partner for Turkey. Both the Parliamentary Assembly and the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities of the Council of Europe have mobilized their respective networks to help us meet the campaign objectives, and we can already see the results. The two campaigns that I have just mentioned touch on very sensitive issues. In addition to target the elimination of widespread forms of violence against children, they both carry the zero tolerance message, strong enough to overcome taboos, traditions, and the resistance to address what happens in the privacy of our homes. In this respect, I'm convinced that they constitute a very valuable contribution to the implementation of the UN study recommendation. Madam Minister, holding this event in Ankara gives me particular satisfaction. As I know that the Turkish government is committed to the implementation of both the UN study recommendations and the Council of Human Policy guidelines on integrated national strategies. Significant steps towards protecting children and preventing all forms of violence against children have been taken in your country. They include the ratification of the Lanzarote Convention and of the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, the Istanbul Convention. I understand that the new dynamic structure of the Ministry of Family and Social Policies has been instrumental in the development of an integrated national action plan for the protection of children from violence. I would like to congratulate you, Madam Minister, in particular for this steps. I hope that Turkey can serve as a good example on how rapid progress can be achieved when all key partners, such as decision and policy makers, representatives from civil society organizations, researchers and international organizations are involved in supporting such important developments. I wish our Turkish colleagues good luck with the finalization of the action plan. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, before concluding, let me express a very warm thing to our Turkish host, in particular to Minister Fatma Shahin and all the colleagues in the Turkish Ministry of Family and Social Policy. I also take this opportunity to express my warmest thanks to the colleagues in UNICEF Turkey <coughs> for their professionalism, their support and positive spirits in co-organizing this event. Everything we do is aimed at building a child-friendly Europe, a continent which puts children's rights first. I am convinced that a society which is friendly to children is the only society worth living in. Thank you for your attention.